So is it worth getting a front runner roof rack for the Discovery? Well, they're not cheap. The wind noise isn't bad, but it is noticeable and it certainly hasn't helped my fuel efficiency. And to be honest, I don't even think I have a lot to put up there. But is it worth it? Definitely. <laughs> whatever the cost, whatever the dramas fit in it, and trust me, there was a lot of dramas fit in it, um, whatever the wind noise or the slight difference in fuel efficiency, this thing was totally worth it. I've got to be honest, I know this sounds a bit sad, but even when I just walk up to it in a car park or something, just seeing how it looks, it makes me smile every time. Okay, here's where it starts to go wrong. So, as we start to screw in the new 6mm bolts into the roof mounts, um, one of them snaps almost immediately, and we weren't even drilling it in hard. I think by that point we were doing it by hand. And it takes us a good hour or so to drill that out carefully and then re-thread the mounting nut. Um, then we put another bolt in, and that snaps too. So that took us another couple of hours, and this by this point would completely damage the thread inside the mounting nut. Anyway, if you're not a complete amateur like me, you might realise that those mounting nuts are actually just another bolt with like a thread inside them. Um, so if you just scrape away at the uh, body filler that's around it, uh, you can get it out quite easy with a 13mm spanner. We obviously didn't know that because we thought it was all just part of the roof. So I managed to get a spare mounting nut and then I replaced the one that were damaged in the roof and then we were good to go again. But what I would suggest is the mild steel bolts that come with the roof rack, just don't use them if you've got a discovery. Those mounting nuts apparently are renowned for being an absolute pain. So get yourself some high tensile steel 6mm bolts instead um, and then you'll have less dramas. So on the outside of these mounting bolts, um, it's a 10mm thread and on the inside it's a 6mm thread. And don't be tempted to just put any old 10mm bolt in there unless you're going to seal it really well. Because if you don't seal it really well, you'll flood all the bottom of your car as soon as it rains. And ask me how I know this, yeah, um, before I got the spare mounting nut off the old Discovery Sport, I tried my luck with just a 10mm bolt and a bit of um, silicon sealant that I bought from Halfords. It did not work. But that's another worthwhile tip though, if you are getting water in the footwells of the car and you don't know where it's coming from, then just check the roof because um, I didn't see any damage to the roof lining or anywhere else, it was just the footwells were absolutely soaking uh, once it rained and it was because of that 10mm bolt and the silicon sealant that just didn't work. So what I used instead was, like I say, the uh, replacement mounting nut and a load of Seeker Flex and it's been absolutely fine ever since.
thought I'd do a quick video in the light so you can actually see what we were doing because uh, by the time we got to fit in the ladder it was uh, dark um, and you might have been slightly concerned about seeing all of the grinding and the sparks um, and I'll explain what that was about too. So this little casing here which goes uh, above the number plate is the thing that you have to take off in order to get the ladder behind um, and when you have a look at that underneath you can see there are three uh, screws that go into um, the back of this casing. Now once you've got those screws out um, you then also need to take off this plastic covering if you're gentle with a with a flathead screwdriver then um, this will just pop straight off there like that. There's one screw that goes into the handle and then you also might need to take off this flexible plastic cap which sits over the, um, the latch on the uh, top of the tailgate. So when you've got that plastic cover off, there's two things that you need to do underneath there. You need to disconnect the electric supply to the lights and you also need to get at the three nuts which are just sat in these three holes. Um, and that's a 10 mil socket. So the grinding that you could see was these screws because actually only one of the three actually unscrewed. The other two just spun freely in the casing and um, didn't come loose at all. So we had to really carefully cut those off with a grinder just so that we could actually remove the casing. I still haven't um, come up with a solution for replacing these yet because uh, I don't really know what they're going to be screwing into now. Um, but I'm taking the car to Avenger 4x4 later and um, hopefully they can tell me what to do about that. attach this little anchor bracket which just holds the lip of the, the ladder in place on the top of the car um, and with that in place and that's pretty secure. So if you're wondering what this little anchor bracket is for, it's not very clear in the instructions on the front runner packet um, but that's, that's where it goes, um, just on the hinge of the top of the tailgate. So I made myself a deal when I got this car that any modifications I made to it must be interspersed with lots of adventures. Otherwise, it's just a cool looking car that's sat in the, in the car park. Um, so now that I've got the roof rack and the ladder fitted, I'm gonna to go to the Peak District for three days. I'm just gonna test out the roof rack, test out sleeping in the car, um, and just have some fun. 